Almost no country in the world is debt-free. The United States owes $38 trillion. The European Union, $14 trillion. Japan, $9 trillion. Even oil-rich countries are drowning in debt. Germany, China, all of them. Naturally, this makes you wonder. Okay, everyone is in debt, but who is all this debt owed to? Here's where the story begins. Because debt isn't just money, it's one of the invisible building blocks of today's world. From wars to economic crises, from rises to collapses, everything stands on this massive scaffolding we call debt. And as you walk toward the end of that scaffold, you start to realize something. The world isn't really indebted to anyone. It's indebted to itself. But of course, this cycle doesn't treat everyone equally. To understand how today's mountain of debt was built, we have to go back in time. The idea of national debt didn't originate on Wall Street. It was born in wartime. In 1694, while England was at war with France, its gold reserves ran out. The king went to merchants and asked for money. The merchants said, Fine, but we want interest. To manage this arrangement, the Bank of England was created. That day was the birth of modern government debt. Then France, the Netherlands, America. Everyone took notice. A state that borrowed was seen as a strong state. Instead of fighting for gold, issuing bonds and earning interest became the trend. This was the opening of the financial age. Centuries pass, and here we are. Debt has become one of the world's core products. The U.S. owes $38 trillion. Japan owes more than $9 trillion. The world's total debt has exceeded $315 trillion. That's three times the global economy. But the real question is this. Who actually holds this debt? For example, half of America's debt belongs to investors inside the U.S. banks, funds, insurance companies, the Fed. The share held by foreigners isn't even one-third of the total the debt owed to China. Just 2% of America's massive debt. So the United States is largely indebted to itself. It issues bonds, banks buy them, the Fed buys them and creates money. Americans pay taxes, and those taxes flow back as interest into American retirement funds. The cycle continues like a closed loop. And this isn't just true for America. This is how the whole world works. Japan lends to the U.S. The U.S. lends to Europe. Europe lends to developing countries. They accumulate foreign currency and go back to buy the debt papers of developed nations. It's like a board game where everyone keeps saying, I'll write you down as a debtor. And the main actors running this game are central banks and giant funds. They are the ones who effectively determine how trustworthy a country is. If the markets stop trusting a country, its economy can collapse. Even governments can fall. Central banks are like the backbone of the system. When they buy bonds, they create new money. In other words, every currency in the world is essentially backed by debt. Here's the bitter truth. No country plans to fully pay off its debt. This isn't a scandal. It's the nature of the system. Government debt keeps going like a subscription that never ends. New debt is issued to pay off old debt. They don't pay the principal. They just keep paying the interest. Because that's what's safest for everyone. If governments suddenly paid off their debts, the world economy would collapse. Banks would lose their safe assets. The money supply would shrink. That's why politicians who say, we'll pay off the debt, are telling a story. The real goal is to keep debt sustainable. But even the phrase, we owe it to ourselves, is only half true. 
Because the interest gains flow to the top of society, the burden usually falls on the ones at the bottom. So the more debt grows, the more inequality rises. The debt system is necessary, yes, but it's also extremely fragile. If trust collapses one day, that's when we'll understand what debt really is, a promise that cannot be kept forever.